You ain't gotta be that. You know what I'm saying? It's... So in summary, mm-hmm. get them started young. Don't be an a-hole. Got it. <laughs> For the, wraps it up in a nutshell. You feel yeah. me? <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and this guy. My guest today is the creator and founder of the band that is a neo-soul R&B and jazz fusion group. Met him at actually a homegrown songwriter showcase when it was at the Strat. Now it's being held at Soul Belly Barbecue, hosted by Hal Savar. Definitely, definitely look through the videos on the channel. You'll see a whole bunch of reviews by me for it going there tonight, as a matter of fact, at the time of recording. Um... The band is actually the winners of the 2022 Pahrump Music Festival Battle of the Bands. Yes, and that's pretty cool. Please welcome to the channel, Lamonte, the drummer, creator of Intuitive Soul. What's going on Say with hi. you? Hey, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's all the notes I got. Okay. <laughs> so, first of all, welcome to the channel. Let's do it proper. Yes, sir. Clunk. Uh-huh. Mm. Us musicians, we're rocking hard with water and ginger ale. Ah, uh, you already know. <laughs> it's 2 p.m. on a Sunday. What do you want? So... First of all, thank you for watching. If you don't know who Intuitive Soul is or Monty, thank you for watching. Definitely stick around. We're going to be having a music video from uh, the band. Um, they can, You've done instrumental. You also yes. have had singers. Yes. And so I want to dig a little bit into that. When um, Right now the band is on hiatus. He's going to be going on tour soon, hopefully. And, yep. uh, and then when that's over, probably uh, the band's going to just restart with a whole new lineup pretty much, right? Pretty some much. Of, some of the old, some of the new? Uh, pr- uh, pretty much, yeah. Right on. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, who writes lyrics when it comes time f- if there's singers involved? Uh, it's a collective. So, um, usually uh, the singers will come up with something, mm-hmm. and then the musicians will work around that, and we'll build something from there. Like any typical band. Yeah, basically. any typical band. Right on. Cool. Um, when it comes to, like, the private party instrumental types situations yeah. where the singer is not needed really. Mm-hmm. Okay. How is, what's the writing process for an instrumental, just an instrumental song? Is it, is it, who brings like, Hey, I have this idea. Is it, is that a, you never know, or is it always one person who's kind of doing the, the here's the melody I had in mind and we build around that. Uh, usually, uh, when we're doing, you get the call. Yeah. I'm going to have to call you back, sis. Gotta call you back. Oh, sorry, sis. <laughs> sorry, sis. I gotta call you back. <laughs> uh, but when we're um, when we're writing, mm-hmm. um, instead of us like writing out lyrics, we write it out through music. You write, so, you write those beats, write those moments. So I, I'll I'll come up with something, or uh, my good friend Lou Lee, who was my lead uh, lead guitarist in Intuitive Soul. Um, you know, uh, he will write amazing riffs, and I'll say, "Bro, play that again," and then I'll get I'll start making a beat to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, my boy Drip Drip Hendrix, uh, who was my bassist at the time, uh, he'll come in, he'll lay his bass line down. Armin and Brandon, who were my main and auxiliary keys. They would come up with the melody. So it generally starts with guitar riff and, and then the backbeat. It, it depends. Um, sometimes it can start with the keys. And then, you know, um, Lou will tell Armin, keep playing that. I'm going to play some around that. Mm-hmm. And then me as the musical direct, uh, director, I'll structure it out to where now okay. we're starting to form a song. You know, especially going from transition uh intro to transition into a flawless seamless going into you know going to the next song you feel me Go on. so <laughs> so yeah i mean it's a collective and the group the guys that i had they are some of the most amazing musicians that i've had the pleasure of knowing yeah no they're tight and everybody no matter yeah, who, shout out who, to y'all, man. Yes, no matter who got the spotlight on them for a solo or just a, a moment, 
it, it was like everybody just kind of dropped out, let them do their thing, and then boom, we were back. There was no yes. awkwardness. Every song is tight. It, it, a singer's Very dream. Tight. Singer's dream. You know. Yes. I that yes. I used to uh, sing in a band uh, many years ago where literally it was, "What do you got?" They would play something they'd been working on, and yeah. I would sit in the corner with a notebook and just write it out mm-hmm. and and figure it out. And they didn't care what I sang, <laughs> and I and I would just say, and I would I, I wrote around them and around whatever. Yeah. You know, breaks and everything that they'd written. Yeah. Because at that point they were like eighteen, nineteen, and I was twenty-two, and okay. we just didn't have that that pedigree, right, like, right, right. That experience. Right. But now, you know, um, getting in a room, it's like, hey, here's what I got, and then we build from that. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk earliest musical influence. Okay. Meaning, what is that musical influence? That what is that moment where you're like, I want to do that? Whether it was a, a, <laughs> a particular singer oh, or a God. song or. You know, what was that earliest musical moment that you're just like, I want to do that. I want to beat on things or I want to, man, I want to go down this twisted path of music. Honestly, I was, I knew I was a drummer before I was even a drummer. Okay. So (laughs) my mom always tell me uh, when I was in her stomach, I would, (laughs) I would be kicking and moving like, and then when I came out, yeah. I was just patting. I was patting on everything. Right. Like I, I, would, I, would like that, yeah. I would be pulling. I would be pulling pots and pans out with uh, the the wooden spoons. Yeah. And I would just start banging on stuff. You're not the first drummer that's been here. It's like yeah, as a kid, I used to my, my and my parents. You know, I got to shout out them because they just let me. Yes. Say, you know, say, yes. Yeah. My dad brought me my first drum set at two years old. That I started. Brave I started, man. I started playing <laughs> drums at two years old. Jeez, I'm pro. Yeah, man. So I've been playing drums for a very long time. Wow. Yes. Um, so from earliest musical uh, mm-hmm. influence, yes. to, let's, let's go down memory lane a little bit here. Okay. What's your favorite show memory from playing with either Intuitive Soul or just, you know, just as you? Um, what's that memory? That, what's that moment that's like that I'll remember, remember forever? Um, that it either like checks off a little rock star checklist or some it, that. It was incredibly bad, or whatever. What was uh, favorite our, show? Our favorite show was when we won Battle of the Bands. I mean, yeah, that, because kind of there, right? that that right there, because we were only together for five six months. Ooh, five six months, right? And we we beat every band that was in that competition, like. We didn't even play our hardest set, and we blew everybody out of the water. That it, it has amazed me in the past. I've done uh, Battle of the Bands a couple times, where you're just like, "How did you get on this?" It's, yeah, <laughs> not, like not to but, on the horn, but the, like we, we practiced. You know? Yes. So the band who we who wound up in the finals with us, mm-hmm. they were a rock band, and they were good in their genre. Right. I take nothing, nothing away from that. They were amazing, but going against uh, neo soul, jazz fusion, especially the fusion part. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, no, you I mean, you start hearing some crazy things, you know, on right. the fusion side. So, right. and then we're then we were playing R and B. You know, that's what mostly, you know, people listen to. Right. So. Yeah, and then when we did play our hardest set, it was just, it was no competition. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was just no competition. God, the Eagles pushed me out of camp. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> no, that's, I say that in the most humblest way. Like, we were amazing. We, we were just amazing. I'm man. the most modest person you'll ever meet. <laughs> Right. I had to brag on him because yeah. I, no, always, no. I always that brag is, on him. Is really, it's, it's mm. for us to be together in that short period of time, yeah. and we had so much momentum. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I respect every last one of them. Yeah, I mean, and it's legit. You, you, yeah. It's something that you definitely you know don't be a new musicians don't be afraid to brag if, if something goes really good for you don't yes. be afraid of it. I know because yes, you worked hard for it. Yeah, that that imposter syndrome is real. Yes, that feeling of oh well uh, now I know why I messed up this one in that one minute. Yeah, we all do yeah. it. We all do it. But yep. you, you can't be afraid of that. All right. Uh, so all. moving on. 
from uh, Character Show Memory. Mm -hmm. We'll talk. You've played a lot of venues in town. Yes, I have. What's your favorite for live music, whether listening or playing? Taverna Costera. What? You know what? <laughs> You're the first person to say that. But I, yes, I agree with you. It is one of Jeff. Shout Jeff, out to Jeff Wong. Shout out to Jeff Wong. That's you, my good friend. You, you were yeah. doing. You good are work. doing. Yeah, you're doing amazing uh, work, especially bro. for a rooftop venue. It could go Man. wrong. It could go Ooh. wrong sound wise. It could go wrong. But yeah, um, yeah. They have. A, I know they have like a couple different people on sound there. Yeah. Um, but it's it's always a good time. It is. And, and even though it's you know up on the rooftop, they've got misters. They got fans. And it just, it never seems like it's, oh, this was, unless it's raining. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> it's raining. But then they, they got it downstairs. But, um, yeah, so Verna Costera, I, I actually did a review of them. Uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So you can check out that review here. Bink. When you're done watching this. Um, and I, I was blown away then, and I'm still, every time I go in there, the artwork and it's everything. Amazing. Yeah. It's it, amazing. It's a really cool vibe, and I'm glad that it's yeah. been blowing up. Yes. Um, so, I can't, I can't argue with that, honestly. Um, I've played there... I played there. I don't want to probably say the most times because as a drummer, I have played that venue more okay. than six times. Okay. And I played. I played with Stanley Avenue. Shout out to my. Yep. You know my old band. They put on the show. Yeah, Stanley Avenue. I was the drummer for them. You weren't on the show. <laughs> I was not on the show. <laughs> it was. A, it was a. It was a virtual interview at the time. Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 Was, and uh, I also played there with uh, Virtue Sound, uh, Scotty Dub. Yep. Zoe Day. Uh, Zoe Day. Yep. yep. Shout out to her. I was her drummer for a while. Yep. Um. Yeah, man. So. Yeah, Tavana Costera, man. It's it's always yep. when I'm there, I feel like I could just I can show the world what I'm what I'm made of. You feel me? Ooh, wow, yeah. you, you can use that, Jeff, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's awesome. Um, all right, I honestly can't complain. I, like now, for me, I have I always have a fond spot, a fondest in my in my heart, soft spot. There we go, yeah. soft spot in my heart for uh, House of Blues from playing there. Mm -hmm. I, I played downstairs. I played once. Okay. And just seeing, there's a sound person up there, and there's a sound person there. And yes. I could hear everything, which yep. for an indie rock band, you don't get that a lot. You don't get to be like, I can hear everything, everybody there can hear everything. Mm -hmm. House was, you know, I mean, there's a reason why they're all over the world, pretty much. So, just piggybacking off of that, the reason why they have a sound guy on the stage and a sound guy in the back uh -huh. is because the sound guy on the stage is for the stage. Yeah. The guy in the back is for the outhouse. You feel me? Yeah. So, and, and I, I've never together, had that before. So. Yeah, man. When it comes together, it's mm -hmm. it's amazing when you can hear everything so clearly. Yeah. It was And sad. everything is level. Yeah. I was, man, sad that, I was sad we only had one set. <laughs> and and it was short, but uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was it was good. Uh, moving on. Okay. So, actually, one other place that I'm really really loving is Chiba Hut on Rainbow Sahara. I don't you haven't played there, I think. No, I have not. But I met um, Chalmer. Chalmer. He's, Chalmer. Yes. What's up, bro? Chalmer's coming on the show. Yeah, man. Uh, I think he's playing tonight at Showcase uh, at Soul. Is he? Yeah. I might have to come check you out, bro. The Showcase we're talking about, if you don't know, is Soul Belly Barbecue on Main Street in downtown Las Vegas. There's a singer-songwriter showcase hosted by Hal Savar, who's been on the channel. Yep. Uh, and in fact, everybody that plays that showcase, pretty much, it's a reunion now every, every week. We all know each <laughs> other. A lot of them have been on the show. A lot of them are going to be on the show. Yep. Um, and... It's just a really cool thing, but uh, Soul Belly Barbecue is a legit venue. I like it a lot, too. Yeah. But, something about Chiba Hut is, uh, it, it's, it's just this, like, low-pressure, everybody-has-a-good-time mm -hmm. thing, but you still get uh, good food, and you still get, a, 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 you know, so note, definitely shout-out to Soul Belly Barbecue. Thank you for letting us do the showcase there. I, I say us. Thank you for letting Hal do the, the showcase there every week. Um, but uh, the reason I'm bringing up Chiba Hut is uh, mm -hmm. by the time this comes out, it'll already have happened. But for the on the live there, on the live stream, he's live streaming by the way. Um, August sixth, this next this coming Saturday, mm -hmm. seven p.m. at Chiba Hut on Rainbow and Sahara, Room Six Rocks Summer Showcase. It's my first ever. Thank you to former people who've been on the band uh, the uh, show. Five acts that have been on the show are going to perform. It's a varied mix of musicians 
and they're gonna have they'll be able to put out merch. They'll be able to perform for people that they wouldn't normally see because you got like singer songwriter, punk person on acoustic, blues. <laughs> you got Dead Money. You got blues band, blues rock. Okay. You got uh, Outlaw Country out of Utah, and you got Crimson Riot, which is pop punk. So it's a very interesting lineup, okay. and they all have one thing in common: they've been on Room Six. So nice. Yes, I'm excited. It's a free show. If you're in the area, swing by. Also live stream. Um, and if you want to see the live stream, I'll have a link. I won't have a link in the description because I don't know what it is yet. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, check it out. Moving on. That That's my plug. There you go. <laughs> Buy merch. Room6.shop. There you go. So, I want to shift gears a little bit here okay. and talk about gear. Now, you're a drummer. Yes. So, we could be here forever talking about gear. Of course. I have a question for you. Yes. How many drum sets do you have and which one's in your living room? Uh, so, <laughs> um, uh, uh, because I have a daughter, uh -huh. I, don't, I, don't, I don't keep my drums in the living room. No, no yeah. set for her at two years old? Uh, well, she's not two yet. She's just, she just turned nine months. So, oh, okay. You know, I got a little bit of time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, I did have two drum sets. Uh, unfortunately, I had to get rid of one, um, because I had to go to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 this guy killed my brother. So I had to, uh, I had to go bury my bro. Yeah. And, um. That's, that's uh, uh, yeah, I didn't mean to kill the mood, but oh, yeah, so, but, uh... I'm sad to say you're not the first person that's, that said something like that on yeah, the channel. And, yeah. and you know what? I'm sorry to hear that, um, but, so I, th I thought you meant you had to, like, move to St. Louis. No, nah, no, nah, I moved from St. Louis. Okay. Because I knew mm -hmm. if I stayed, that probably would have been me, too. You yeah. St. Louis, St. Louis, I love my, I love my family. You know what I'm saying? And it's just one of the most dangerous cities to live in. Really? Yeah. Huh, I always thought that was Detroit. Nah. Yeah, I said Detroit. I mean, I mean I, every every state have their, yeah, you, their crime way. Vegas crime certainly way. has its moment, you know has its places yeah. where you, you, you don't go in dark. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was just, I should have followed my first mind. I, I should have told him to come out here and move. Because he was actually supposed to move out here with me. Oh, man. So, yeah, man. So it's just, I'm like really like heartbroken and disappointed because I'm just like, hey, dude, you're supposed to be out here with me. Yeah. You feel me? So, but um, I have my, but all my companies are Tama, Roland. Uh, oh, yeah. It's good sponsors. Sticks. Yeah. My, my big bro, shout out to my big bro, Eric Moore. Um, are those, are, those are all sponsors of you? Yes. Right on. So I have Roland. Evan Drumheads, uh, Tama Drums, uh, Dope Sticks, Trex Assembles. So, uh -huh. yeah. Cool. Are you familiar with a, a drummer? He, he does. He lives actually in um, Overland Park in uh, Kansas now. Okay. Uh, basically Kansas City. But, uh, yeah, I said that, Sean. Uh, Sean Flum. Sean Flum. P-F-L-U-M. Hmm. Stage name Sean Flam. Oh, nah. Of course. But um, he's actually a, a, he teaches, among other things, he's a drum teacher. Mm -hmm. and, but he's, his, his like, he loves him playing some jazz. Oh, yeah. I was in jazz. I was in jazz yeah. band in uh, middle school, mm -hmm. high school, and college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was my first actual interview guest. Uh, really? He was my former, he's my former drummer. And uh, I asked the question, which favorite show me memory, and as a high schooler, he's like, um, playing Carnegie Hall. Wow. And I was just like. That's gonna be a high bar to meet. Yeah, and and yeah. Um, I mean, winning the battle of the bands is cool. <laughs> yeah, but I was just wondering if it because oh, I, I played, I played uh, by myself. I've yeah. played stadiums. I've played um, concerts, concert arenas. Gun for hire. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've I've done all of that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Last year, I was just on tour uh, with um, Adam Patterson and the Heavy Hearts. They've been on the channel. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Shout Love that suitcase. Shout drum. out to them too. Love the suitcase you know? drum. Yeah. When they play their, when they play their just by themselves without an actual drummer, they. <laughs> yeah. They they uh they were fun. Yeah. They are fun. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering though if you knew Sean because you, I I just you both are kind of at the same caliber of drummer mm -hmm. and and you tend to hang you know people come to your 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 circle that yeah 
tend to be, you know, you, you like attracts like. Yeah. So just wondering. Okay. Um, all right, cool. Two more questions. We're almost done. All right, cool. Yeah. Now, if this was a band, this would take a little longer, obviously. But <laughs> and if you have any, by the way, if you have any uh, suggestions for who should be on the channel, mm -hmm. throw it in the comments. If you have any questions for Monty um, or for me, throw it in the channel. Are in the comments. God, I can't speak the words today. <laughs> I'm good the English Same. speak. <laughs> um, I wanted to know. Yeah. Number one, are you gonna tell your daughter? No musicians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I know how musicians yeah. are, man. My, my, yeah, my, kid, man. my kid is 14, and oh my god. And I tr I, tr I threw me I threw music lessons, and it was like I like making music, I like dancing, I just don't like the lessons right. because. I, I want to enjoy it. I'm not trying to be great at it. Right. Kind of thing. Right. Her, her, her whole thing is art. Okay. And and uh, that's and, and it's a whole other thing. Like you can't say go to art lessons. Right. You know, it, you just got to keep making the art. Right. So, but I told her like, no musicians, because <laughs> you know, I, I know way too many of you. Yeah. Me. Yeah, man. No, but what I the real the real question is, what's what's your, the parenting approach to music going to be for her? Are you going to say, you know, here, here, try this, try this, try this, or is it going to be when you're ready, or are you going to say you're you're drumming? Uh, well, she's already patty. Yeah. So it's already it's already looking like she's going to play drums. Oh. So um, uh, as soon as she starts walking, and you know, I'm a teacher. I'm gonna let her hold the sticks. And see what she does with it. There you go. Because that's what my dad did with me. And now, yeah, I'm one of the most in demand drummers out here. So look at you. Yeah. Right on. All right. On that same vein, last question. Mm -hmm. You made it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's pretend we're talking a little Monty. Let's pretend we're talking to like new musician. Like okay. you started very, very young. Yes, I did. But you didn't actually start like music business stuff. Like actually going out in the music business until a little later. Obviously, until a little later, yeah. I, you know, no two year olds on stage. But, <laughs> right. But what is one thing you wish someone had advised you about? I'm not going to say warned you about, but what is some, one thing that you wish someone had told you, hey, this is a thing you're going to need to know about doing music? And, and this is, you know, like what's the advice for a new musician, new drummer, or whatever? Um, practice your rudiments, always remain humble. Uh, leave the ego at the door. Uh, yeah, this interview notwithstanding. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm sorry. Yo. I, I, I forget I said that. Like, <laughs> practice <laughs> rudiments. <laughs> practice your rudiments, man. Uh, be easy to work with, bro. Like, you know, just it, not everything has to be a fight. I mean, if you if they ask you to just play it a certain way, just do it, you know. Um, but still be yourself, you know. Just leave the ego at door, you know. Be mm -hmm. humble. Don't think you're better than the next. Be flexible. You know? Yeah, be flexible, you know. Yeah. And if you can do it, do it. But if you can't, be very communicative. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Communicate. It's it's not hard. And that's for every musician. You that, know what I'm saying? Like nothing makes a musical experience, whether it's band rehearsal or an actual gig. Yeah. It, nothing makes it harder than having to guess or you know communicate. Yep, definitely. It would nip everything in the bud. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> and you're the first person in over three and a half years of doing this that's said be easy to work with, and that is something that. I, I try to strive to do. Yeah. You know, be flexible. It doesn't mean like bend over backwards and, and, and lose yourself. But yeah, yeah. I mean, but don't be a pushover. Yeah. But you don't have to be right. You don't have to be time. an a hole. You feel me? There you go. There you go. You ain't got to be that. You know what I'm saying? So, in summary, mm -hmm. get them started young. Don't be an a hole. Got it. <laughs> For the, wraps it up in a nutshell. You feel yeah. me? <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being on the channel. Man, thank you for having me, bro. No worries. And stick around. we got a music video coming from Intuitive Soul. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the meantime, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room Sorry. 6. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba.
I'll catch y'all in a minute.
Thank you. 